What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to Season 3, Episode 31 of Hit the Books, the podcast all about sports betting, the best bets you should be taking, and everything surrounding sports. This week, we got some new rule changes in the NFL. We want to review those. March Madness this week, MLB coming in hot, plus power rankings across each league. So let's jump in and introduce this week, this week's episode and introduce my co-host, Huff, or sorry, no Huff, just Ace and Mackey this week. I even wrote that down. God damn. Just Ace and Mackey this week. Ace, why don't you get us going this week? What do you got for us, buddy? Like, nice to see you here for yet another week. Yeah, no Huff this week, so we'll definitely be missing him. But uh, we're going to get going on a great week of sports here. We got opening day tomorrow. I'm souped for that. March Madness in the Sweet 16. I mean, Mackie and Huff are printing money for me. We've been saying it all year. Um, the NHL heating up. Bruins with a great win last night. I know Mackie was watching that one while his Rangers took the L. Two of them fighting for the President's Trophy right now. Rangers so won? What are you talking about? Well, taking the L on the card for us. That's the way. Yeah, I took the L on the card. Yeah, we get the two points. Yeah, good win though. No, it's a good point. I, I'm just thinking from how I once from they how you took the puck line. Yeah, I'm like, fuck you. You didn't cover the puck. That line. was pretty. That was a pretty brutal not cover. But uh, yeah, but you know, like I said, NHL buzzing. NBA. The Celtics are insane. So I'm ready to get going another week of sports here. Lame, lame NFL news, like you said. But other than that, some great stuff coming up. Yeah, lots to review here across a couple of these leagues, uh, especially those rule changes and such. But lots of stuff coming up here soon. The championship game for Mar- or for yeah for March Madness is that first week of August. Immediately following is the Masters, and then we have the NFL draft there at the end of the month there on the twenty fifth. So let's jump in and get going here in the NFL on Monday and Tuesday. The NFL announced a number of major major rule changes aimed at increasing player safety, enhancing replay and creating more excitement in one phase of the game. The beginning of the game will look a lot different in 2024 than it did in 2023. Coaches will get one more chance per game to challenge an official's call, and a controversial tackle technique is being eliminated. So uh, just to kind of review these, eight different changes to the kickoff. I don't have them all listed because that'd just take me a year to talk about. Um, The hip drop tackle is banned, so it is a foul if the player grabs the runner with both hands, wraps the runner with both arms, and unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hips and or lower body landing on and trapping the runner's legs at or below the knees. The NFL trade deadline will be one week earlier instead of week eight, a week eight trade, de- trade deadline. The date has been moved back to week nine. Coaches will no longer have to win their first two challenges to get a third challenge. Now they will only have to win one of their first two challenges to be awarded a third enforcement of fouls on change of possession plays. During a play that results in a possession change, if fouls are committed by both teams, any major offensive fouls, like unnecessary roughness, that were committed before the possession change will now be enforced. Some changes to replay, nothing too interesting that I was like jumping for joy about. Unlimited designated return transactions in the playoffs, and emergency uh, third quarterbacks had a little change as well. What are you guys thinking about these here? I know I went on for a little bit there, but what are you thinking? Go ahead, Ace. I'm just going to say real quick before Ace gets going, I, I don't think I like one new rule that was added or anything changed, but uh, Ace, wait, let me hear what you have to say about all these. Yeah, I mean, it's encouraging more offense. Uh, it's good if you like betting the over. Um, I know you guys are big first half under guys, but a lot to unpack here. Not a big fan of the tackles. I know it creates injuries. That's probably the best out of all of them that was included. I know Huff said, what are they playing uh, flag football next? He would be going off if he was on the podcast. I actually do understand that one. The kickoff rule, I don't think it was broken. No need to fix it. But I guess they were just tired of seeing too many touchbacks. They want to see a bit more offense and uh, keep people engaged in the game, really making it unnecessary play. I don't like the onside kick rule. That was something that stood out to me. Did you see that one, Mackie? Yeah, but how else can you do it? No, but you have to report it. You have to report it to the ref before doing it. it it's It's a completely different lineup, so you have to. I think this kickoff rule might be the dumbest thing they've ever done. Giving them the opportunities where if they don't land it inside in, inside that 20-yard line, you're getting the ball at either the 40 or the 35-yard line. That's 25. Yeah. That's that's almost like 20 yards away from a, a field goal for most of these kickers nowadays. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, that's I, a- I think it's just ridiculous. I think there was – the kickoff was broken. They needed to do, to do something about it because everything was just a touchback. These touchback, days. Back, yeah. But um, that, I don't think this is the way to do it. I, I think this this is like – sloppy football this isn't this isn't the nfl yeah i like i like seeing some of the classic stuff say but they're always looking for some new rule um gonna see how that affects plays now because you're gonna get people really getting precise with these kickoffs and uh some of these return specialists maybe they can have some uh, 
crazy highlight reels come off of it. But I, I'm with you. I'm not a big fan of any of these. I like the onside kicks. That was my big thing I was getting to. Being able to surprise the other team, right? I, I You're not going to see that again. Remember, we saw that by the Saints in the Super Bowl, what, a decade ago? A little bit more than yeah. that now. But uh, going to be missing stuff like that. But we'll see how they go into else? play. I was going to say, how else can you do an onside kick? Like, you can't, like, surprise onside kick. when the You just have to have a great onside kick that gets yeah, yeah. off some hands. Other than that, though, another one Jesse was talking about was uh, the challenges there. I don't like the change from that rule. I think you're uh, you're um, advocating for mediocrity there. You should have to get both challenges right in order to get it back. I know sometimes some teams miss out on crucial plays by not having that third challenge, but sometimes I think the, the game's the game, man. Read. The booth the intervenes game's here the game. and there. Like They're going to pick up the big ones, you know? And also, if you get your first challenge... Now you're just going to throw your second challenge out there for anything that's even close because you know you're getting a third. I, I, I think that that's a pretty stupid rule. And honestly, like, okay, so sometimes plays are really bad and you have to challenge them. Okay, get a challenge. But, I mean, refs are a part of the game for the most part. You shouldn't be getting, like, three challenges in one game. I think that's insane. That's I think crazy. that, I mean, one challenge is okay because crucial times, like, in crucial matters, like, maybe you should make sure they get the right call. But, like, Bad calls are a part of the game in every sport. I, I just think that three challenges to like uh, make up for refs' mistakes are just ridiculous. I I don't know. I, I don't I, mind I the, the three challenges good. part. I just think if you get one incorrect immediately, you don't get the bonus. Well, even that, it's even easier to just challenge plays now because they know that they only need one correct. Yeah. So you get that one on your easier. belt. You can, just make... you can look at more ticky tack stuff. And it's doing what they don't want, slowing the game down and getting more whistles. Um, crazy, crazy rule changes there. Every but... year. Every year, I feel like we everyone talks about how the NFL is just ruining itself. But I yeah, mean, but I'm Jesse, never stop I think I, it, I think I think our next point here shed some good light on the NFL. We're kind of trashing it real quick, but they did give us something good uh, this week. Yeah, here they're embracing that midweek holiday spirit in 2024. The league will hold two games on Christmas, a Wednesday this year. They said they're very happy with the engagement they got from both on TV and in the stadiums. So, some interesting stuff for two Christmas games. I'm what do you guys think about that? I don't know about you, Mac. Yeah, but good football content. on Christmas. Ooh, that was awesome. great last year. And uh, yeah, hopefully like this, we get obviously. some good teams. Need to see like the Bills. I know on Thanksgiving we always get the Cowboys. That's a fun team to watch. But give me someone that's scoring a lot of points. Give us a marquee matchup. I think last year we got blessed on the holidays with some divisional ones. Did we get Ravens and 49ers on one of the holidays as well? So a that lot of a lot of that was, that was Christmas. Christmas. That was a night game on Christmas. Yeah, like that's great. Hopefully they do a good job of uh, making these games really matter and even those it's nice seeing people who don't tune into the nfl watching and you're like yeah i got some picks for you here <laughs> everybody's always asking me uh what my play is on that day i don't know about you mackie but um it's gonna be fun yeah, to have always, again this year i always get the questions i kind of like hate giving them out in person though because then like if it doesn't hit it's like what the fuck and i'm like you know what make your own picks then <laughs> like, yeah yeah, every or the the people that come up to you, like your cousins, friends, or something like that, yeah, with their long yeah. list of everything they got in the day, you're like, they're like, do you like that? I'm like, well, you went with everything, but you the got everything, sink, so, so like, so yeah, like, like half of it, it but <laughs> it's, it's it's funny. But holiday um, football can't beat that. Best sport to watch on the holidays, and I'm I'm looking forward to it already. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna be a long time till we're there, though. Yeah, we got a good bit here till the NFL comes back here, but we got the draft again there at the end of April. So something to look forward to. All righty, let's jump over to the NHL here. A couple little points here, starting off with the power rankings. Uh, pretty similar to last week, if I remember correctly. Number five, the Florida Panthers. Number four, the Carolina Hurricanes. Number three, the Vancouver Canucks. Number two, the New York Rangers. And number one, the Colorado Avalanche. Um, I believe the Rangers being the first, yeah, the first team to Clinch, 100 points. Yeah. Got it last night. Yeah, I mean, when Let's you're go, in that baby. division, it's not too hard. I mean, who else is even good in that division? You yeah, tell but me. They're, lead, two, they're leading the league. two teams in the top yeah. five. Yeah, and how many do we have? One. Oh, our power ranking right now. But I'm going to tell you this. We left them off the power ranking two weeks ago, right? And what did I say? They'll be right back there. We left them off this week. So what do I have to say now? They'll be right back there. What did they do responding last night? A nice 4-3 to three come from behind victory in South Florida against the Panthers, who many have dubbed as one of the best teams in the league. Cup favorites, yada, yada. They're built. We're down 3-2 to two in their barn. Come back and win in the last five minutes. So, 
Bruins are right there with them. And uh, we took that season series against them, took it against Toronto. We're going to be back in that top five, mark my words. But going past our teams a bit, it's good to see um, some other guys getting back up there. It's kind of nice to see the Avalanche at one. I don't know if you're happy to do that as well. That kind of made me pretty hype. I uh, I had them at one as well, too. I mean, they were on a nine-game heater, and obviously, I I mean, that team is just stacked. Like, doesn't it feel but, like it's um, about time? Like, dude, there's, there's, we all know they're the best. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about this weak year. goaltending. Yeah, uh, weak defense. I think that. But, I think that they can get matched up with 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 a few teams in the East. But um, deadliest team in the league, though, maybe. Probably, probably the deadliest. Just because you know McKinnon and McCarr. I mean, there's no uh, no better duo. The pace than, McKinnon's but, um, on too. Like, I think it's his second 19 game point streak of the season. He scored. What did he score? 45 seconds into the game last night. Yeah, and we had that on yeah, the card. That was like that. Yeah. You, I saw you already text me. You were like, McKid, and I was like, yeah, he's just You were like, did the game even start, dude? Like, Yeah, we'll take that. Tanner that not nice. talking to us on the card last night. We've been adding those anytime. Everyone but. A bit more. Yeah. Everyone but. Last scores two. Trocek had one. I mean, everyone but him. You know but, what's um, tough is like he's the only guy that I sent into the card that didn't hit out of individual goal scores I liked last night. I had um, I had Robo. He ended up putting one in the back. Of that. I had Matthews, too, but. Jake Allen, I was riding him in fantasy. He had a great performance, even though the Devils are kind of out of it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll get back to it. Some more anytime goal scorers. You'll see those on the cards. But uh, let's talk about these power rankings a bit more. We're kind of getting off the track. There's Carolina Hurricanes, like you said, another great team out of the Metro. Um, anybody else that's really raising your eyebrows? I mean, dude, there's seven teams in, in, in the league that are within three points for the number one spot. These, these power rankings really don't mean a lot because I think that you could put any one of the seven teams at any spot. But um, obviously the Bruins getting left out. I mean, you could say the Bruins are the best team in the league and you can make, make a yeah, very no, valid argument for it. But um, I don't know. This is going to be a really tight race. I think this is, this is going to be one of the hardest cups to, to win is how tight all these top teams are and how well they're playing against each other. Like that Bruins game last night, that's just an awesome game. And if you could see it, you could see a Bruins-Panthers second-round matchup. I think, uh, I mean, you're going to see all these series go seven games, I think. But um. This is, I'm, Dallas this Stars is the, really getting back into it too. That was too. that was my that was my preseason Western Conference pick. I said, yeah, the Avs are good, but the Stars are getting back into the mix. You have the Canucks out there, how, you have the Oilers. How scary do you think the Stars really are, though? I think the scariest team because Jake Ottinger hasn't even played good, and they're really good. In my opinion, I'm taking all six other teams ahead of them in that top seven. Team. Really, I, I'm not. I know I've said it all year long, and I'm gonna to stick to it. I'm not a believer in those Canucks come playoff. Maybe I'm above, not, maybe above the Canucks, maybe above the Canucks. Yeah, but I mean, you're that, taking you're right though. You're taking the Avs, Panthers, Bruins. I'm taking the Rangers. I don't know if you are Rangers and um, Hurricanes. Hurricanes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm I mean, taking was, all of them as well. But are, the Dallas uh, Stars, they're a really good team, and their depth is there. I mean, they're they're loaded at every position. That roster, top to bottom, is one of the top ones. But yeah, enough talk about these top seven. That's pretty easy. Let's look at some of the other teams that are missing out right now or just on the cost. The Caps and the Predators, they kind of have a, a, a reason to even be thought about being put in this top five. We wouldn't have thought this months ago, but they're, they're crazy stat lines in the last few games. I think the Predators are, what, 16-0-2 in their last 18? Yeah, they haven't, they've gotten points in 18 straight games. It's just ridiculous. Even last night, they were down 4-2 late in the third. Come back. 4-1. They were down 4-1. Four, one. Four, one, it was 4-2 late. And yeah. Hot too late, and then they and then they went in OT. I mean, that's just incredible. That team, I mean, they're getting hot at the right time. Unless they run into the Avs, I think that they can that whoever uh, they match up with in that first round is going to have it be in for a tough matchup. Yeah, I Avs agree will with probably you. roll them, but I mean, I think so too. But UC Saros can keep you in any game. You could see a lot of overtime matchups and whatnot. That West wild card spots coming down to the wire. But um, yeah, the Capitals though in the East, you put them on the card last night. Ended up cashing overtime. Um, can't remember. Oh, game, put too, Dylan I mean. Strom, who's been electric. Guys like McMichael, Strom, all these other young guys stepping into these roles. I mean, Ovechkin's there, but that team's been great, and you're riding the streak. I like that Caps team, to be honest. I think that they're going to get that last playoff spot as well, but um, yeah, they're playing really good hockey. Ovechkin's fine in the back of the net a lot. I know I said a few weeks ago um, how bad he was this year and how he's just waiting to break the record, and I was it was true. I mean, he had eight goals in the first 50 games of the season, but he's... Uh, He's been going off. He's been going off lately. So, um, props to him. Props to the Caps. I I, I think that we're looking at a, at a Rangers Caps first round matchup as well. So, um, that'd be a good one to get. To, to uh, a lot to. can sh- lot can shake out for those top two seeds in the East. 
But yeah, the Caps looking like they're going to lock their spot, and none of us predicted them the, a while ago until the streak started. None of us even thought of them as a wild card team. We thought they were dead it, in the water. I mean, with the I've, never thought, I've never thought the, the Caps were good, but I've never, they've, last year they had nothing to show for it. This year they didn't really make much more moves. They just kind of got older. But um, I mean, they're coming together. They're playing really good hockey. Yeah, and then other than that, one team we never talk about, maybe it's our bias, Boston, New York, Pittsburgh, but Philadelphia Flyers, they gave you guys a run for your money last night. They gave us a run for our money the other day. It looked like we had them games in hand, and they just keep putting pucks in. Dude, that's a pesky team. That top line with Owen Tippett, Mark, Mark Frost, I think his name is. and um, Morgan Frost. Morgan Frost and Konechny. Holy yeah. shit. They, dude, they buzz, dude. They put the puck in the net, and they were, I mean... Shesterkin had a very good game last night, even though he gave that's up why five. They, that's why of, they dealt with Claude Giroux. Dude, they, they are... buzz, and they find ways to get to, to just, like, rebound after rebound, and they just find ways to put the puck in the net. It's, it's actually really uh, really fun to watch. That, that team's pretty good. A lot better than I, th- than I expected. They're 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10. Flyers. Yeah, that's Flyers. valid. I mean, they, they hang I around. Feel like... thing. They play good I mean, the Ross, They went on Ross, a stretch, and then I feel like they just dropped for a minute. I mean, I think they're holding okay, on. But... They're holding on for yeah. dear life right now, and I think that it's going to be good enough to get a playoff spot. Caps keep rolling. It's going to be hard to keep that third spot over them. But um, Caps are only one point behind them. So yeah, and I yeah. think the Caps are hot. Games, they're going to take it. Games, you know what's, yeah. Mackie? You're a goaltender. Listen oh, to this. Shit. You, I didn't even realize that. You know what's tough for me to think about though? Carter Hart. We know what's going on with him. He has been playing hockey for a while. Samuel Harrison stepped in the net, played well. But his workload jumped a ton, something he's not used to in the NHL. I think he's going to be faltering down the stretch. That's why they're having these high-scoring games. How, how old is he? I mean, I, I think that he loves this. Yeah, he's but I, 24 he's, years I don't, old. He is mint. He can play I don't think he's, games. Yeah, that's what I'm 16. saying. But he's not good enough to do it that often at this level, I don't think. He's been playing pretty good hockey. I mean, what that team went through this year and how, how well they were doing at that point— I, Everyone said right after yeah, that scandal, he did came well out, early. they're going to keep ball, and they didn't because yeah, of him. If you've looked recently, though, their high scoring games and maybe the stretch that Jess is talking about of mediocrity, it seems like there's some attrition setting in giving up five goals. He, when he plays these good teams, he's the reason that I think if I saw them in the first round, if you saw them in the first round or anywhere in the playoffs, we think we'd roll them in four or five games because they have a goaltender that's not marquee, young guy who's already had a long, long season under his belt, playing a lot of back to back games, kind of beat up. Not even that great either. I think it's more a credit to their offense and the coaching that Tortorella does. Tortorella bringing in that that mindset of the team, not me. And they don't really have a superstar to beat me, me, me. He even benched his captain um, the other day, which was crazy, Sean Couturier. But other than that, I, I don't think this team poses any threat come playoff time, and they're going to drop their Metro 3 spot to the Caps, I believe. Well, I, I, I honestly think the East is really top-heavy, so, I mean... All Both those all those lower teams are going to be running into some tough matchups that I don't really think there's going to be many upsets in the East this year in the first round. But um, I mean they're just one of those teams the, that ha- where do you put the Lightning? Are they in the top? Are they they're in bet- the only team that's in between that bottom tier and the top? I tier. think it. I I think it depends on their matchup right now. I mean they're running into the Panthers. Panthers are are the Panthers in five probably. Yeah, but that's a great that no. Nah, I mean. We'll see. Paddle of Florida will be show up large. Like, that's oh wait, no, they're running into the Bruins right now. If they probably have started, it'd be Bruins. Like, yeah, I think the Lightning will give the toughest series to anybody out of the. I don't think the Flyers and Caps give a series. I think the Lightning will. Andre Vasilevsky, I, I mean, Victor you're more Hedman, scared. Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov, Steven Stamkos. Like, they have. You're the more names. scared of Lightning than you are the Caps and the Flyers for sure. Like without a doubt. Yeah, but I mean, I'd rather see the Lightning than the Leafs. I'll say. I'd rather see the Leafs. Give me the Leafs. I know they can score, but they have goaltending woes. I don't want to see Andre Vasilevsky. I want to see Joseph Wall or Ilya Samsonov. Andre, well, dude, you could see Andre Vasilevsky used to lit up with his defense. But he's he still playoff Vasilevsky. Have you ever seen him play poorly in the playoffs? They lost. Yes, last year. They lost 4-3 in the first round. Yeah, what would you say? Four games to three? Yeah. Yeah, that's a seven game series. Have, you ever, seven. have you ever have you ever seen have you ever seen Andre Vasilevsky? Isn't that crazy? Like, We're talking about Vasilevsky being bad because he lost a game seven. No, but yeah. um, obviously you don't want to run into Vasilevsky, but I'd rather run in. I think I'd rather run into the Lightning than the Leafs. Yeah, Leafs I, scare I, me. I don't know why they don't scare you because you've dominated them for twenty years, your entire life. In this whole season, we swept them. It's just they yep. have. You, how important is goaltending? Last year, that was a different story. That's an outlier, in my opinion. Oh, dude, we've talked about this a lot. It's usually not the marquee goalies that win the but championship. Joseph, but these guys are they're not even. They're not even serviceable, though. Like the the Toronto goalies aren't even serviceable. 
They are for a playoff for a round win. They're not though. They're not though. For like, one have round, you, I think have you followed Joseph Wall and Ilya Samsonov all year? Samsonov actually didn't he have like a like a like a okay obviously started the season like worst season in like he's winning games now but he's still having a sub nine hundred save percentage. I don't know. I mean, dude, the light the or the Leafs can score and the Rangers like they can go on games where like like a skit of games where they are not scoring at all. Yeah, so, like, we need. But let's we talk need... about that. Let's talk about that thing you were talking about, though. Like the non Vasilevsky goal is at least Bennington was very hot going into the playoffs, and he was a, considered a starting goalie. At least Aiden Hill was very hot and in front of a, a great defensive. Aiden court. Hill. Aiden Hill did not go into the playoffs as the starting goalie. No, but like defensive core in front of him. That's the other thing that the Leafs don't have the defense that can support a weak Lightning. Goalie. Don't either. Lightning do not yeah, have but a strong. No, they, they, have, they have they have the goalie that can support a, a bad okay, defense. True. Okay, there you, you got go. what I'm saying. Like, there's yeah, no support on the back end. They can't keep pucks out of the net. That's why I'm not yeah, worried about the Leafs too much. Right. But they can put them that's, in. That's they a good argument. They can put them in. So, so you're you're more scared of the Lightning than the Leafs. Yeah. I am. What about the what about the Caps and the, and the Leafs? Uh, the Caps suck. The Caps and the Flyers are done. They're, <laughs> they're losing praying. four. They're losing. I'm four praying five. we get the Caps, bro. Like, I'm praying. Would you be mad if you got the Flyers? No, of course not. I just yeah. I don't want to see the Lightning or the Leafs. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's either the Lightning or the Caps for us. But eh, that's why we need the, that. You'd rather see the Carolina Hurricanes or the Lightning? That's your question. The Carolina Hurricanes. I'm not. I do. I don't ask me why. I'm just not scared of them at all. Actually, that's not even a possible matchup. It'd be either the it'd be the Lightning, Flyers, or Caps for you. Second round, it would be Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. If you can even honestly, it might not be a bad deal to take that second seed in the Metro. Go play. Nah, we're not going to draft it. We want that. I I want the one seed in the East so we can get that second wild card. Yeah, that's, that's but the I kind of don't want the President's Trophy. And then you want yeah. the home you want the home field in the second or home ice. Yeah, the, you want home ice in the second round against the Canes. Yeah, good talk. There are a lot of good stuff going on in the NHL here. More East heavy than the West, but the West is heating up too. Connor McDavid doing his thing out there. Uh, just beat the Jets last night, who are also one of the best teams in hockey. Connor Hellebuck, I, he's been a little shaky of late, but I still think he's getting that Vesna. Um, you have any objections? Yeah, to him? he's pretty locked in. Yeah, I think so too, especially with the Demko injury. How how big do you think the Demko injury is for the Canucks? I don't know how long he's actually out for, but uh, even just coming I mean, back I th- from injury, you're not going to be the same right away. Yeah, I mean, if, if he can be the same, I don't think it's obviously going to make a difference. But, I mean, you're going into the playoffs. You need your, your goalie who's pretty much gotten you there. Obviously, they have all the star power on offense. I guess, well. I'm I guess not my saying question they're lacking is, offense, but... Is my, my question is, do they need him to return to the form he was playing to to have any chance? Yes, a thousand percent. Okay. Because, again, I, we, we both said we're not really scared of this team come playoff time. Mm-hmm. If your goalie, who's pretty, who, like second best goalie in the league yeah, this year... Yeah. Um, if he's not playing to what he needs to be, you're in playoff hockey now. Your offense isn't going to be putting up as many points as they were in the regular season. It's not how it, yes. it's not how it goes. So if your goalie's not playing that well, then they could be in trouble. But I think they get out of the first round. Yeah, I, I, think, I, those, I, I think those wild card teams are just a little too weak. What if you saw them versus the Nashville Predators? What about the Vegas? Yeah, I, don't, I hope it's going to be Preds. I, I, I in Vegas for ch- the wild card. I might have changed my stance as Vegas getting in as me cheering for them. I don't know if I want them to get in. I wouldn't mind seeing them fumble the bag like you were saying last week. They're not going. I was looking at it. It'd, it'd be a really bad, but or really big bag fumble because it's like ten games left. They have like five points in hand. Um, you got to really six in hand. It. Yeah, so they're, yeah. they're locked. They have in, a game but... in hand as well. Uh, they're uh, yeah. They do. Yeah, a no, game in that's... hand and six points, ten games. So left. they finesse the cap. Mark Stone coming back from the dead, like he came out. So now long. you see, now you see Avs Knights first round. The Avs, Avs will smoke them, right? I don't know. That's not the eight seed you want to see. Canucks Preds. If the Preds keep rolling like this, I mean, I'm gonna re- retract my statement. The, the West better upsets. Teams, all right, here's a good take. West better upsets in the West card. and the East. Yeah, for sure. I don't yeah. think there's going to be upsets in the East. No, it's going to be pretty tight. Um, bro, Lightning would be the only one I'm going to say. Lightning, I think, have a chance. Especially, I think their best chance is the Battle of Florida, too. Not Which is battle, crazy to say. Not the battle in Boston? No, I think I think we have a better chance over them. I just think the fact that that rivalry runs a bit larger down there. 
so close, two teams that know each other even more than anybody else. The, the most familiarity, the Lightning, little brothering the Panthers so many times with that core group. Um, I think that's it. their best chance of getting out of the first round. Yeah, definitely see it. I mean, that too, the Atlantic is a gauntlet. Yeah, it is. Unless you have the one seed, you're guaranteed to win like crazy first round. Series, first yeah, round. great series. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind uh, New York Rangers and uh, Flyers or Caps in the first round. And then you get Panthers, Lightning, Bruins, Leafs. I mean, I want the Bruins to finish as high as they can, but that would be a crazy uh, playoff. That's why I feel like we're gonna. I think we're gonna get that. Rangers have a pretty friendly schedule coming up. Besides this next game against the Avalanche, but they're also like we said, they're so close. It could the cookie could crumble anyway. You're right. Alrighty, boys. Good stuff there out of the NHL. Jumping over to the college basketball world. Just some stats here before we get going. Since the beginning of March Madness, the boys are 12-3, and three, plus 9.74 units. Uh, since the beginning of the season, we are 129, 84, and 4, plus 41.76 units there on the year. So tons of good stuff coming out of the college basketball world. You guys got anything to say about that? And Mackie, if you want to lead into what we got coming up, coming up here. Uh, this weekend. Mackie, start with a recap of some of these great games that you guys have been cashing on lately, because it's been fire. Yeah, I just want to say 41 units on simply one unit plays, a few two unit plays here and there. It's just absolutely insane. We're hitting at 60%. 60% is just almost unheard of over a 220 uh, game sample size. So um, these numbers we put up this year are basically just comical, but um. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. I don't know how it's not getting more attention to be honest. But um yeah, March Madness has been great so far. First day we went 5 and 1. Only loss being Nevada who blew a 17 point lead in the final 7 minutes, I think. So we were definitely uh we were definitely um robbed of a of a sweep there, but um and then last Sunday, I think. Yeah, the last uh last day of the round of 32, we went 4 and 0 um sweeping the board. So Finished out twelve and three. It's been crazy. Um, we're seeing the board really well, and uh, yeah, the, not a lot of upsets either. The, the um the public absolutely ate. I think they went thirty six and thirteen in the first two rounds. So um, I think we could see that definitely flip going going forward. But um, yeah, these uh these Sweet Sixteen matchups, they're all not a lot of like I said, not a lot of upsets. So they're all pretty good. They're all we're in for a really good uh Sweet Sixteen. But um, all four. One seeds get get through. All four two seeds get through. Um, Auburn goes down only four seed, and then Kentucky went down as the only three seed. So, um, Ace, what do you th- what do you got what do you got to say about March Madness so far? Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Like you said, not a lot of upsets there. Like I said, I've been alluding this all year. I become a big college basketball fan come March, just like everybody else. But it's so exciting. How can you not? Um, we have some great contests coming up. Really, really great play style too. A lot of NBA hopefuls and whatnot on these top end teams, guys on big NIL deals and whatnot. So I'm excited to see the competition that we get in this sweet 16. It's going to be tougher to pick too. Cause like, I, I like riding some of those favorites. Obviously I do what you guys, everything you put out, but then I do some of those favorites too. But there's some good stories out of that first round. Um, some good games as well. I think the Texas A&M Houston game was crazy. That was the first one seed to almost be upset. UConn's they've looked dominant. And I saw some stuff today. Could they be in the playoffs in the East in the NBA? Probably not. But like it's like the Alabama Crimson Tide beating an NFL team, um, that that kind of theory. But they've been trouncing people. The Iowa State and Illinois, I've been riding them a good bit. I still am happy to say I have Purdue, and then Hoff told me to put a UNC one in. You guys have the future. I have them winning two of my brackets, Purdue winning one. So I got those guys alive. But it's been some great stuff all around. Um, great games. Yeah, uh, we all yeah, like I said, we have UNC pending right now. We have plus two thousand, I think. Um, we got it before conference tournament, so we had it a while. We also have UNC reaching the Elite Eight. We got that before the tournament. Uh, we got plus one sixty, and now they're obviously minus four and a half to win the Sweet Sixteen game. So you have very good hedging opportunities on that if you got that one in. But um, yeah, these these uh these matchups coming up for the Sweet Sixteen, we'll get into that more over the li- live stream. But um. Gonna be some good games. Definitely a few very good. Uh, didn't you didn't you hit on the Duke uh, to reach, reach the Sweet Sixteen bet as well? Yeah, that was another future we hit. We hit Duke to reach the Sweet Sixteen at minus one ten. Got it with ease as well. So um, no sweat. What did you think of no what'd you, well. 
What did you think of some of those early round uh, upsets? We didn't have many in the round of 32, but the round of 64, we saw some. We saw, uh, what's his name, Jack Bulky, uh win that one. Or how do you say his Jack name? Jack Bulky from, from Oakland, yeah. Uh, we, I mean, I, th- I thought I kind of knew this Cinderella story was going to be gone. You're running into NC State. Who, uh, NC State's actually a very good team. They're on a, they're on a that big uh, hot man's street right now. Great, great from the wall. Yeah, DJ Burns. DJ Burns has become kind of the idol of March Madness this year, but... Jack Golke, yeah, he shot eight two pointers the entire season. Incredible story, but uh, obviously, like like everyone says, their their greatest pastime is watching March Madness, seeing seeing these future accountants like just lighting up these these first round draft picks next year. It's like these guys are not like Jack Golke. You'll never hear from him again, but um, definitely uh, definitely lit it up in that first round. That was cool. Yeah, was, and then who it's else? something to say yeah. about that. Knowing that next year though, that's like one of those teams. They played a young squad, probably right, and they have like those COVID seniors, 25 years old, whatnot, the veteran team took out the young ones there. So that was kind of fun to see. And you, I mean, you think about it, Kentucky gives up 100 points a game. Then you have this kid who's literally shot eight two-pointers the entire season. Comes in and lights it up for 33, of course, because he's just getting wide open threes left and right. But um, that, was, that was definitely a cool game to watch. Then the other one, Auburn. Auburn going down was crucial. A lot of people had them. If you, had, if you don't have UNC or UConn winning, you probably had Auburn beating them in a Sweet 16. That was me. But um, Auburn took a tough beat to Yale. I only had Auburn now, winning I one game. Last year, Princeton got to the Sweet 16, beating Arizona in the first round. This year, you got Yale uh, beating Auburn. So these, these Ivy Leagues are definitely tough to play against. Meanwhile, if you go to conference play of the – not even the tournament, just early conference play, there's probably not many people at those games in general. No, of course um, not. I probably got 2,000. My- my local Brown, Rhode Island, they they went to the I think the semifinals or championship of the Ivy. Brown was a favorite. Yeah, and they're brutal. Um, no offense to them, but uh, yeah, some other great games there as well. I thought some cool quotes were seen. The Michigan State quote from Tom Izzo versus the Bill Self quote. Bill Self's terrible quote there seemed pretty arrogant. He goes, "I've been looking at next year for over a month now." Like, buddy, yeah, you what were a top seed in March Madness. Meanwhile, you have Tom Izzo. With a lower seeded team losing to a good team in the round of thirty two, he they lost to UNC, right? Yeah, yeah, lost to UNC in round two. So you can hang your hat on that. But um, he said, "I'll die trying to get past further in the tournament. I'll do whatever." So two different coaching styles there. So you see, March brings out the best in everybody. Yeah, and Michigan State didn't have the team this year, so that that win the first that first game was um was probably all time is though. Then you have Bill Self, who's also a very good coach. Um, well-known coach as well, but I mean, say that with that with that roster. I mean, you got Hunter Dickinson as well. Looking for, you're looking forward to next season for a whole month. Going in, you're going in as a four seed, dude. Like, you're playing in the best conference in college basketball in the Big Twelve. You got, you have that to say about that team. It's just embarrassing. But um, I don't what's know. his name? Colex on on Marquette, right? Would you say? Yeah, Tyler like Colex. Yeah. yeah, I think he's from Rhode Island, isn't he? I have no idea. I think he is, and uh, no we've been watching a lot of him. Shock is smart on the sidelines too. That guy's pretty funny to watch. Uh, so you guys are all you got. All you Rhode Island heads are just up there, like, "Yo, he's from Rhode Island, dude!" Like, yeah, yeah. I was every time he the touches game. the ball, that guy's from Rhode Island, yep. man. There's like 18 people here. <laughs> the white guy just playing the game right, hitting the clutch shots though at the end to make sure they hold on for a win. That Marquette team, they gotta be pretty happy. They're going further than they they usually do with good chance here. That's a good team. Um, who else do you think outside of the one seeds? Give me a couple teams that you think that can make a good run here to the Final Four. Iowa State. I, I mean, they were two seed. They probably have like the fifth longest. But they're odds, playing but... Illinois. That's a tough game. I like Illinois. It is a, a tough game. Every single game right now is pretty much a tough game. Um, who does NC State play? I mean, that's probably going to be the easiest game. Are they playing Clemson? Playing. No, Clemson is not favorites. Clemson is playing a two seed. Arizona. Let me look at it. No, uh, Arizona is playing Clemson. Yes. Um, Illinois, Arizona Iowa State. Arizona get over the hump. I think it's I it's set up for UNC Arizona. It's Caleb Love versus old team. There's a lot of uh, a lot of history with Caleb Love and that UNC team. So I think it's set up for that in the Elite Eight. That's that's gonna be a really good game if they can get there. Is one you guys kind of alluded to when we talked about this last week. Yeah, yeah, we said this was. I I've been saying this since uh, the bracket came out. This is set up for an Elite Eight matchup. But um, NC State against Marquette, I think NC State's run comes to an end here. Marquette is really good. They're playing a weaker team, but I don't know. I've seen crazier upsets. Tennessee, Creighton. I like Tennessee. 
I like Tennessee as well. There's a lot of money going into Creighton, but Creighton's really good as well. That's going to be a good matchup. I think Gonzaga hangs with, hangs with Purdue. I really do. I think Am Gonzaga I the only person up. that thinks that Purdue is good? No, I think Purdue is very good. I, I, we took them to cover last game and everything. No, I know, I know. I no, I'm, saying Gonzaga, like, I'm saying like long term in the rest of this tournament. Yes, I don't think I, I just don't think they have it in them to. Uh, they have the Big Ten hasn't had a Final Four team since like 2014, 2015. Big Ten always finds ways to choke. I don't, I don't think this team is really that good. They, uh, if Edie has one bad game, he gets in the foul trouble. One game, your entire game plan changes. You cannot adapt to that. And then you lead a game against another number two seed or whatever. Um, I think they're going to run into trouble somewhere. But Gonzaga, this, they might run into trouble this week. I think that Gonzaga can uh, they match up really well against them. They can go on a little run. I don't know. It's going to be a good game. But, um, yeah, a lot of good matchups. Holy shit. North Carolina, Alabama should be good. I really like Iowa State. But, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I'm excited to watch. I mean, as as a guy who's like a seasonal college basketball fan, I feel like this is one of the uh, more easy to read fields than we've seen in a while. All those top seeds winning, but I'm like I'm saying, this I is, think these Sweet Sixteen is going to be so competitive now with like not so many bad. Teams. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. This is the type of bracket that people look like, and they're like, "Wow, gambling's so easy." It's like there's like no upsets, and we're like, "Yeah, this is like the first time this ever happens." But um. Yeah, everyone's like, yeah, there's no upsets. This, this sucks. Wait till now when you have all these top teams playing each other in winner go home games. No, you know, it's going to be tough. All to these games are going to be. It's going to be very tough to pick, and you're going to see a lot. I feel a like lot. we haven't seen much overtime yet. I know that A and M Houston game. We're going to see it a bit more now, right? We should. We should. I don't know. These are going to be really good games. We're in for a great Sweet Sixteen, and the Elite Eight is going to be even better. You better have the. The locks for us, Mackie. I'm trusting you, but you have the track record proven too. Yeah, I think we'll be good. Me and Huff have our, have our eyes in a few games already, so we'll uh we'll have those plays out. Good stuff there, boys. Out of the college basketball world, make sure to stay tuned for all of our live streams here. Uh, we'll be done with the one by this time. The uh, time this episode comes out, but the one on Saturday for. Uh, the next round what round would that be is that the elite eight yeah next round is the elite eight yeah okay yeah next round there on saturday for the elite eight <laughs> jesse not to have... cut you off real quick you sound like every sports fan flipping through the channels oh i missed that i was like i need to click on i you know, whatever please don't hate on us i like women's college basketball i put this note in so don't take that offensively the NCAA Women's March Madness Tournament rolls along as we approach the Sweet 16 on Friday. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes and her new uh, NIL deal have been doing well this tournament, pulling out some impressive wins. What are you guys thinking on this? Ace, you got anything for this? Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't been watching too, too much of it, but Caitlin Clark seems like she's grabbing everybody's attention. I saw something the other day that said she's the highest NIL earning player in March Madness for both men's and women's with a $3.1 million. Um, so that's kind of crazy, but she played our West Virginia Mountaineers the other day. Huff would have been on this one with me because I think he watched the game and they got a shot and free throws like 30 to 5 or something like that. And the game was super close. So you hate to see that. But Caitlin Clark, she's got superstar written all over. I saw um, who is that that does the the big three league? Is that Ice Cube? He said to give her like $8 million to come play 10 games in his league or something like that. But uh, Uh, she was was talking. Five million. Yeah. She was talking the talk after the West Virginia win. That seemed kind of controversial from the box score, but I don't know, Mackie. You seem to maybe watch a little bit of it, catch some games. Do you think there's any teams? Uh, I know South Carolina is really good, LSU, but uh, is Caitlin Clark looking to grab a national title here? Here's what I'm going to say about that W Iowa game free throws were 5 to 30, and in the fourth quarter, they, the, tie, the score was 16 to 16 in the fourth quarter. Iowa had 14 points off free throws in the fourth quarter. West Virginia had zero. So um, I think that that game was definitely skewed so Caitlin Clark can get to the next round. But it's for good reason. I mean, everything that we say about women's sports is that they need attention. They need, they need the global field. They need, they need all eyes on them. The reason that this season has been better is because of Caitlin Clark, because of 
uh, Angel Reese, because of uh, Paige Buchers, because you have these star players that everyone knows. So they're going to make it so that these players match up in the final rounds, because obviously you're going to get more viewership. And that's the whole thing with women's sports is that they need more viewership. So I understand the rig in this in this sense. But I mean, games like this, like that's just like the most obvious thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like at least try to hide it. But um, like like um, other teams that I think that can win. I don't think anybody's beating USC. South Carolina. I mean, they haven't mm-hmm. lost a game. Yeah, they've all been season. on fire. Yeah, they haven't lost a game all season. They have that big, big girl. I don't even know what, what her name is, but yeah, I know she's huge. She's a dog. That team is so good. Um, I think I, I don't think I was that good to be honest. I think that they'll get past this round. You're going to see Iowa LSU in the in the Elite Eight because, like I said before, they want to see that matchup. They could their their road could end there. I, I, I think UConn is really good this year. Paige I think Paige is really good. Yeah, she got I think she's the best. Year, right? Yeah, she was out all last year. I think she's the best player in in, in college. Um, Caitlin Clark's the flashiest, obviously, but um, I think Paige, Paige Beaker's probably, young too, sophomore, or she missed her know. freshman year technically. So I don't know her age. I remember um, I was seeing her Instagram highlights coming out of high school, but yeah, th- there's a lot of big superstars for the woman coming up, so that's good to see. It's all the big name schools. It seems like they're not not many uh, random schools there. You got USC, LSU. Iowa and Texas uh, is the one seed. Yeah, so like that's that's pretty cool to see. So maybe it'll gain some, gain some more traction. Hopefully they uh embrace the stardom though, because it kind of goes downhill once they get to the pros. Tough to see, but true. But yeah, I mean that that West Virginia game that was just it was like every play there was a foul and there was like nothing there. It was like what is going on? I've never seen Caitlin Clark before. getting the LeBron treatment, but of women's college basketball, it's not. It wasn't LeBron. even like. It like wasn't even just her. It was everyone on that team. It was just the craziest thing I've ever seen, to be honest. Alrighty, boys. Good stuff out of the whole college basketball world, men's and women's. Those March Madness tournaments, full steam ahead here. Uh, I'm not 100% sure when the women's um, championship game is, but the men's championship game on Monday, April 8th there. So make sure to tune in for our live stream then. Moving forward here to the NBA, we have our power rankings here to get us started. Coming in at number five, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Number four, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Number three, the Milwaukee Bucks. Number two, the Denver Nuggets. And number one, those Boston Celtics. What are you guys thinking here about these power rankings for this week here, March 28th? Mackie, you want to get us started? Yeah, uh, Celtics don't even have to say anything. We talk about them every single week, how they're number one. Nobody's touching them. They will finish the season at one. Um, unanimous. Number two, Nuggets. I mean, Jesus, this team has been playing absolutely incredible. Four game win streak. They're nine and one in their last ten. This is a, this is a nightmare. This is the last team that the Celtics want to see in the championship. And I think we're gonna see them. But um any other team, I think the Celtics just roll through. But Nuggets, they're gonna they might meet meet their match there. Who else we got? Who's three? We got Bucks, Thunder, T Wolves. Bucks are playing a lot better. They played really well without yeah, Giannis. They're good. For, for and Giannis little. is back though. But la- ter- I mean terrible loss the other night to the Lakers. I mean they were de- they're were- 17 crazy at game though crazy game, game though yeah great game thunder thunder and the two wolves i mean these two teams just not i'm just not sold on for the playoffs yet but the thunder i'm definitely a little more sold on two wolves i think they can run into some trouble depending on their matchup you and i have but, shit um, on them for a while sga yeah, getting it, that sga not, getting that sneaker deal though huh you see that i mean thunder they're getting coach of the year SGA getting the sneaker deal they're getting a lot of notoriety i i agree with you that they're not ready but that team their poise for success over the next decade oh yeah for sure but um they definitely have a, a bright future but it might be a year too early yeah it'd be eager, eager to see i'm eager to see how these veteran teams that come out of the bubble play did you see the other day steve kerr and Draymond had to get separated in practice um i don't really know what's going to happen with the warriors team like that are they even going to make the playoffs i know that they're only one game in the 10th seed above the rockets who have been on fire lately i'll tell you this they're not going to make the, the playoffs they'll make the play in I think they'll make the play-in. They might not even make the play-in, but I think they'll make the play-in. And, I mean, whoever they match up against, either the Lakers, Suns, Kings, you're getting beat. The, Lakers, mm-hmm. the Warriors aren't good enough this year. Um, Lakers are trying to get into that eight seed, so they don't have to play 9-10. Because when you're in that 9-10 game, you have to win two games. It really yep. sucks. That 7-8. Warriors could seven. do it, though. If they get hot, Curry gets hot. That'd be kind of, It's going to be fun to see uh, Steph Curry in a playing game if they can get there. We saw it a few years ago. They lost to the Grizzlies. The mm-hmm. year before the Grizzlies were a two seed. Yeah, that's true. But uh, they went off for like forty. I mean, it was that's what I'm saying. Nice. You know, he's gonna do everything he can to keep his team in yeah. the hunt. 
And then, uh, like you were saying with the Celtics before, no one can really touch them. But Drew Holiday out right now, and they don't have a definite timetable on his return. I think that's a pretty massive move when it comes down to the playoffs and later conference finals, uh, quarterfinals, and then finals. I think he's an important piece of this team. I, I think if he's back by the conference finals, you're good. You don't, you're yeah, not going to need him saying. for the first two rounds. But you do need and him if, when you get... If you want to win the whole thing, you, you're going to need him when you get deep in the playoffs. You can, you can genuinely... You could actually end up with the Bucks in that second round matchup. Yeah, depending on how the standings shake out. I mean, you shouldn't because the Knicks and the Cavs, they have two games on the Cavs and two and a half on the Knicks. But it's definitely close enough to where you could see them end up in that, in that second. You could see them in that second round. I don't That's, think so, but I, I think the table's set for them in the ECF. But you're right, the standings still close. The lot can happen then. Your Knicks hanging around. Um, it's going to be crazy Knicks to follow, just, though. Knicks are just trying to get home court. Magic are right behind them. It's actually a really close battle in that three through five, three through five seeds. NBA is going to be a good playoffs this year. Yeah, yeah, we'll get some more news as we get closer. We're getting close to the NBA playoffs, and we're more of an NHL side of this uh, part of the season in the March Madness right now. But once we get past March Madness, we'll dive deeper into the NBA for you and have some more insights. Yeah, I forgot to talk about that at the beginning of the episode. NBA playoffs begin April twentieth. NHL playoffs begin April 22nd. That's when uh, the first set of games will begin. So lots to look forward to as we get closer to those as well here in the next month. Let's keep it going here as the MLB is also starting this month, uh, excuse me, the, in the month of April. So let's start off with our power rankings before going into this season. Coming in at number five, the Texas Rangers. Number four, the Baltimore Orioles. Number three, the Houston Astros. Number two, the Atlanta Braves. And number one, those Los Angeles Dodgers with that uh, Ify Otani news coming out. What are you guys thinking here coming out of this before we let Ace go off with what he has for opening day and the rest of the season? Mackie, welcome for putting the defending champs in our power. Because fuck the Phillies, that's why. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I don't really care about the Phillies because the Mets are going to have a bad year anyway. But uh, Dodgers are not the one seed if Otani is actually found guilty and not playing. I will say that. Braves are definitely the better team without Otani on that roster, on the Dodgers roster. We saw it last year. Dodgers are obviously still up there, but um, especially with everything going on, I mean, you're going to see clubhouse problems. They're definitely going to have a few more losses than they should. But um, Astros, Orioles, Rangers, like I said, the Rangers could have a more down year than last year. Obviously, coming off the championship, it's going to be tough to tough to uh, live up to those standards again. But Orioles, I mean. I saw people projecting them like 96 wins this year. That roster looks really good. You got Gunnar Henderson coming up, playing really well. What's that guy, Jackson Holiday? He looks like a beast in preseason. But um, Astros, obviously that roster is stacked as well. It's going to be a really good season. I think there's a lot of teams that could uh, that could give those top teams a run for their money. And we could see another team like the Rangers go on a nice run and win another championship. But That's what I'm you saying. You love to see the teams that – you love to see the non-Dodgers or Astros or Braves. You like to see those – those different teams win it. You know those teams will be there. Those top end Dodgers, yeah. Braves, Astros. But you're right. And I said this last week. I alluded to it when we were talking about World Series favorites. Remember, I said, oh, Jesse, give me the Rays on. Just so I can. That's a team that I think could catch some fire. They always develop very well. There's some other ones, too, that I always look at. Um, but baseball is one of the ones where almost anybody could could have a, a tough season and win it. Um, but we'll have to see come down the stretch. I, I know I have some good notes here. Ready for this opening day? I'm hyped about baseball. I know this isn't the hype time for baseball because we really have March Madness, Sweet 16. You have the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs just around the corner. But once we get there, everybody seems to be locked into it. We get our podcast a bit more tuned in. Mac gets more tuned in. Jesse's got me that MLB TV, which is massive. I'm looking forward to those day games starting tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a great, a great season here. Um, those Dodgers are big time front runners behind that. People love the Orioles, but it's kind of a crapshoot. You know, we got the top heavy favorites, but uh, I'm ready for a great season here and to get into some of this opening day and all righty here in continuing through the MLB here. We got 15 opening day games here starting or for opening day tomorrow. Let's hear what Ace has got here for opening day uh, as well. Uh, starting with opening day. Yeah. Like that, but yeah. <laughs> you want to rerun that? No, you're fine. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, some great stuff coming. Like I said, opening day tomorrow. Um, I have some good picks for you as well, I know. So hopefully you can get them in. Uh, we'll, we'll post some of them as well. But I wanted to start with some of these opening day ticket prices. Jesse, I thought you would think this was pretty funny. I don't know if I sent this graphic to the boys. 
but there are some good ones here. Let me at the highest rated ticket, which is kind of crazy to me. I know they're defending champs, but the Texas Rangers, oh, cheapest seat in the house, $285. That's kind of wild to me. And they're only they're playing the Cubs too. It's not like anybody great is coming to town. And then meanwhile, on the whole other side of the bracket, you want to hear the lowest team? I bet you could guess it. I went to their season opener last year, the Miami Marlins, thirteen dollars oh, and the, and the playing against your Pirates, a thirteen dollar cheapest seat opening game. I feel like we should fly down there and just go see that one. I went last year for opening day in Miami. Cheap, cheap prices, great stadium. But no matter where you are, it's a great day to be uh, enjoying some baseball weather. Some other notable ones here. We have the Dodgers Cardinals tickets, $95. Technically not opening day for the Dodgers with um, that series out in South Korea. So that's something to look at as well. Yankees and Red Sox both on the road. So I feel like they'd be pretty high up there in their ticket pricing as well. But I just thought that'd be something funny to start with there. $285 for Rangers Cubs ticket. Not worth it to me. But maybe they know they're not winning. They're not seeing another World Series trophy for a little while. So maybe that's why. Spring ceremony and all. But uh, getting into some of these matchups that we get to see tomorrow, there's actually uh, some really good ones. The first one I'm going to start out with is going to be the um, – well, I'll start out with the first game of the day before we get into it. At 110, you guys, if you're listening to this in the morning, whenever you get to it, hopefully uh, you get to it before this, we got the Milwaukee Brewers and the New York Mets facing off. That's Mackey's New York Mets. That's not too much of a marquee matchup, but everybody's eyes will be on it just because it's the first 1 o'clock game of the new season. But jumping past that, we actually have some great matchups. The That's Atlanta- Fridays. That Brewers Mets game, I have it on Friday at one forty. The first game I have tomorrow is three o'clock. Oh, they got postponed. Am I wrong? They just got postponed. Oh. Yeah, good, good, <laughs> good call. They got postponed. It's rain out, and they're getting made up on the 29th. Brewers and Dang, Mets okay. rained out. Braves and Phillies rained out. That's coming to us live as we're doing the podcast. So good news for you. And you know what sucks too, Jesse? Listen to this matchup I had on tap for us. The Braves and the Phillies. Spencer Strider versus Zach Wheeler, two of the best pitchers in the NL. Two of those NL East powerhouses. So tough to see those games get rained out. That's the MLB for you. But um, like I said, they're Sweet 16 now, so maybe you can watch them that time. But on the other side, there's also some great games happening in the AL. The New York Yankees. I mean, everybody knows the Yankees. This is Huff's favorite baseball team, and he's from Pittsburgh. They're taking on the Houston Astros, who many have dubbed as one of the best teams in the MLB. They're on our power rankings already, as you saw. And it's going to be Nestor Cortez versus uh, Framber Valdez. And Nestor Cortez getting the start because of Garrett Cole's injury that's going to keep him out for a while. We're going to have to see how that ace really uh, takes to it with him missing that start. And then I thought the third one was going to be another AL East matchup here. The Toronto Blue Jays who many have dubbed as an up-and-coming team, but they're just in the toughest division in baseball, are traveling to Tampa Bay, where it'll be Jose Varios versus Zach Eflin. That's also going to be a really good game. I expect it to be low-scoring. One thing I do suggest, low-scoring games on opening day. I know a lot of people want to see runs. I love betting the over. But there's a lot of great starters going. Everybody's aces up on the mound. You're going to see a lot of nerfies out there. Um, I do have an opening day lock parlay that I'm hoping those can get in. These games have not been rained out with naturally so we got the most expensive ticket the texas rangers i think they're going to win on their ring ceremony day as they're taking on the chicago cubs at home i'm going to parlay them with the baltimore orioles in a light matchup and the, the arizona diamondbacks to end the night last game of the night against the colorado rockies i think that's a good three teamer there you're going to be sitting at plus like above 200 there with all three teams uh well two of them coming below 150 and then the d-backs sitting at minus 210 around there i I saw earlier, they have Zach Gallon on the mound, so I love that. Um, but that's going to be a good parlay piece that I love. We're going to we're gonna have some good picks in the MLB card coming throughout the year, um, like I said. But good opening day slate, and then we already get some double headers on Friday, so that rain out, that just does have a silver lining nonetheless. But, uh, yeah, some good opening day stuff to look forward to. I got some more stuff for the rest of the MLB, but, uh, yeah, going to be a great day tomorrow. Excited for baseball week. Love it, Ace. Love it. Lots of good stuff to look forward to there for opening day again tomorrow. Uh, 13 games now with those two getting rained out, but we had 15. We're down to 13 here. So going to be a good day tomorrow. Make sure to stay tuned for our picks, like Ace said. Uh, if I think Mackie, or Mackie and Huff are going to be focusing on the March Madness stuff, so I think Ace is going to be... Yeah, I'll deliver, I'll deliver some opening day picks for sure. You got to have a few out there in the realm, right? I have that parlay. I'm not going to put that on the card, but those of you who are listening, if you're listening to our podcast, you just got a free play right there. But I'll have some more on the official card tomorrow for sure. Heck yeah. 
Why don't you keep going here, Ace, with what you think is going to happen this year, what to look out for, what to watch for, some of these division winners maybe head into the World Series and beyond that. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, so we got four or three divisions on each side, right? And uh, I'll start off with an easy one here. The AL East, I mean, it might not be easy to you, but it is to me. I think the Baltimore Orioles are the team to beat in this division. They've been building this farm system. They have the top prospect in Jackson Holiday. They have all these guys like Adley Rutschman who have come up. Gunnar Henderson, the pitching staff has come together and it's healthy now too. Um, I expect a big year out of Grayson Rodriguez. Uh, I think the Orioles are going to take that AL East. And a lot of people might put those Yankees there because the stars started line up. I think the injuries are going to hamper them. I don't like the staff with Nestor Cortez and Stroman too much. I think the Toronto Blue Jays will be the two seed in the AL East. But you can always watch out for the Blue Jays, Yankees, Ash, and uh, Rays to be involved in that wild card mix. Red Sox, I mean, they're not going to do the worst in the league, but they'll be sitting a little under sub-500. Toughest division in baseball. Um, but yeah, I think the Orioles are the set there. Going over to the AL Central, this one's kind of a crapshoot in my opinion. A couple of teams that are trying to prove themselves, and I think the Detroit Tigers are one of them. They're going to be fighting for that division with the Minnesota Twins, who are ultimately going to win, in my opinion. Best pitcher in the AL in Pablo Lopez. And they also have a pretty solid lineup um, if they can stay healthy. That's probably their biggest concern. A couple of good prospects on both teams as well. Guardians, you would think, you know, you have Shane Bieber, Tristan McKenzie coming off injury. They have those young guys that, um, that have really stepped into their own. A lot of young pitchers like Gaddis, um, a few others, Logan Allen. And uh, they have that top prospect as well that made his debut. Can't think of his name right now. But, uh, yeah, that, Gavin Williams, that's what it is. But that team, they'll hang around the mix. But I'm going to go with the Twins here, and I think the Tigers have a solid year. AL West, this is probably the toughest race here. You have the Astros, the Mariners, and the, and the, and the Rangers. I have the Astros winning it. I have the Rangers missing the playoffs. I, they might compete for a second wild card. You can get pretty in depth with the wild card in the MLB, which is nice. But I think the Mariners have a strong year. They've been really young. Their pitching staff's coming together. Their hitters are coming together. I think uh, Julio Rodriguez, J Rod, is going to push for the home run lead. Um, maybe the MVP race. Like, is he in the MVP race? I think so. He's my third on this list, as we'll get to that later. But I think they're going to edge out the Rangers. I think that was a. a not a fluke, but that was a great season by them, and I don't think it'll be repeated. Mackey, uh, giving them their respect in the power rankings, rightfully so, but the Astros, so star-studded, and then the, the Mariners um, are the up-and-coming team in the AL West. Jumping over to the NL here, NL East, Mackey, sorry to tell you, the New York Mets are not in my one or two slot. It's going to be the Braves. It's going to be the Phillies. They're both going to make the playoffs. Two of the best teams out there. I don't even think I need to say too much. That Braves lineup, dude, crazy. I mean, the names go on and on. If there was ever a team to compete with the Dodgers for the World Series, it's them. I hope we get that NL Championship Series between them again. That would be great to see. We didn't get it last year, actually, but it would be great to see. Um, going over to the NL West, as I alluded to, I have the Dodgers there. How can you not have them? The odds are probably terrible to get them. I do have the Padres slotting in it, too. I think they find a way to bounce back after big expectations held them back last year. I know they lost Snell. But they have a lot of great names there. They have some good prospects as well. I'd like to see Ethan Solace come up in a couple of years and be a top-end catcher. Diamondbacks, I think, take a step back. I don't think they're as good as they were last year. They made it to the World Series. It's kind of crazy. But Erod, who they just brought in, that was their big signing. He's on the table for a while. They don't know how long. They still have some great arms. And uh, Zach Gallon. I think they have Brandon Fat as well and a few others. But um, now getting to the last division, this one has Jesse and Huff's. Pittsburgh Pirates, sorry to say, the Pirates are not in my top two. But some people did have them in the mix for competing for this division because it's kind of wide open. Both central divisions, AL and NL, could be won by anybody. I've got the Reds there. I'm so high on the Reds. The prospects keep going on and on. One thing that's going to hamper that is Matty McLean. Big prospect call-up for them last year. He plays middle infield, bats third or second in their lineup, depending on the day. Is out on an IL stint. Just had surgery to his shoulder, I believe. So that's going to be tough, but Ellie Dale Cruz and the rest of the gang will be holding it down. I like them to win the division with the Cubs following closely behind. We know they like to spend. They kept Bellinger, and they got some big arms out there in the pen. So um, that'll be a fun division to watch. It was last year, and uh, yeah, those are my picks for the division winners there. I got the O's, the Twins, and the Astros in the AL, and the Braves, the Reds, and the Dodgers in the NL. Um, you can find some good odds in some of those. I think it's worthwhile to parlay the Dodgers and the Braves, even though the Phillies could push on that side. Um, that'd be a good futures bet to have. But going into this more, uh, Mac, I'd like you to jump in on some of these here. Thinking about some MVP, Cy Young, and home run king races. We'll start off with the home run king. I think you probably have the same answer as me. Who do you think is going to hit the most home runs in the MLB this year? I probably don't. I mean, I had Otani, but I don't know about that anymore. Does he gamble? Um, what? 
Well, because he's not going to be playing. I'm, I'm going to go Judge. I I just think he his hit his home run rate, but by, by like the amount of times he hit, he's at bat is just like ridiculous. There are numbers you can't beat. I think he was top two last year, and he missed like half the season. But um, yeah, that's funny I, that I'm you say judge. that. I'm gonna you, go judge. You did hit the nail right on the head. Guess who the two names I wrote down were? Otani and Judge, because I think they're wow. going to. And he has protection in his lineup with Juan Soto as well. Um, he hit the Yankees, but you can't deny talent there. I think he gets healthy for the season. That's what you need from him to be able to be in this race. Some other big names that were up there in the odds right now. Matt Olson's up there, and um, I believe uh, Pete Alonso might actually be in the hunt as well. Yeah, I don't. He'll always be up there. I don't ever think he'll he'll lead though. Yeah, I, I'm going with Otani, just hitting as that DH for the full season, kind of shutting up the haters with his gambling allegations and his interpreter being shady. But yeah, I like Judge as well. You can't miss there. Coming in for the Cy Young, um, I'll give my two picks here. I got Pablo Lopez in the AL. He leads the league in strikeout rates and stuff like that. He's going to put up those big numbers. The Twins are going to be competitive, maybe win that division this year. If they're able to win the division and he has his numbers stay the same or get better, he's going to win it in the AL. In the NL, I have Spencer Strider. Um, you know, he's pitching for the Braves. He's going to get a lot of wins. He's a big strikeout guy too. You can tell I value the strikeouts and the wins very much. And they're pitching so often. They go deep in the games. They give you seven to nine innings when they go. Um, one dark horse though, probably going to win the NL rookie of the year. I know we had a terrible outing in South Korea, but Yoshinibo Yamamoto, the, the new Japanese pitcher for the Dodgers, he has a chance to push for that NL Cy Young, has a chance to win that NL rookie of the year award. Time's gonna tell. It could be hit or miss. You know how you never know how it is when they move over to the MLB. But um, I think he's gonna have a great season. And then moving past that, Mac, you could maybe throw some names out here. But I'm thinking for the MVP, some names that came to my head for the NL. I went with Mookie Betts. I went with uh, Shohei Otani once again, Ronald Acuna, and then Corbin Carroll, the young rookie of the year last year from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Then for the AL, I went with Juan Soto, Vladdy Jr., Julio Rodriguez, and maybe Bobby Witt. If he can make those Royals do anything, um, one of the best young players in the game. But any any of those names really stand out to you? Yeah, definitely. I like your uh, I like your Cy Young picks. I'm gonna go Corbin Burns up in Baltimore. Yeah, that's um, a good one. I think obviously the team switch is going to a better team. I think that he can roll this year. And uh, Zach Wheeler after getting after getting paid, let's see what he could do this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. But, hate, um, you yeah, I like those. those names, of course. I honestly don't think I think Otani's gonna have a down year regardless. Now, if he plays or not, he might not even play a game. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I I I'll believe when I see it. He's like one of the faces apparently of it's like apparently there's like like hard evidence against him. Like he's clearly guilty. Oh my god! I got him in my dynasty baseball league. Too, so you hate to see that, but um, yeah. Anybody else jump out? I know some of those household names like Betts, Otani, and Acuna. I threw Corbin Carroll in the mix. I know he's really young, but I think he could push for it as well. And like I said, Bobby Witt, Julio Rodriguez, Vladdy Jr., and Juan Soto in the AL MVP. Anybody you think I missed out on or any of those that really, really jump out to you? Ah, uh, shit. Um, I like a lot of those. I said Acuna, obviously. Um, who was I just thinking of? I don't know. You covered a good amount. Adley Rutschman, he's going to be pushing for it a little bit, too, with the Orioles. You can put almost I mean, that whole... Oil that- that, or- that whole Orioles Gunner roster. Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Jackson Holiday. Oh. I know he's starting the year in AAA. You know who that is? He's the top prospect in the MLB. I was right just now. talking about him before when we were talking about the power rankings. He's absolutely raking in the preseason. Yeah. And then on the other side, if you look at the NL, I know I said Yamamoto. Mookie. For the year. I like Mookie. Yeah, Mookie's, 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 Mookie's a dog. If, It'd be Freddy. Especially if Otani can play, too. You like the Dodge. You're sticking with the Dodgers and the O's. You like those front runners to have big years. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have those guys in the big teams. And they have all the lineup support. And you you have to pitch these guys. They're just gonna light it up. I mean, hey, I'll tell you, you a big couple, game. I'll tell you, you a couple see a big year out of Juan Soto too. Yeah, I think so. If he stays healthy, if him and Judge both stay, if if Judge and Soto both stay healthy, how crazy of a year are they gonna have? Left right combo hitting next to each other. Yeah, it should be. It's, and you're playing in New York where they have the the shortest fence out in right field, so that that helps as well. But um, couple yeah, of young I mean, names. Have, too. Couple young should have a good names. year. Keep your eyes on. I, I said Jackson Holiday. This guy, Jackson Churio, you heard of him? No. He plays for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's going to win NL Rookie of the Year if it's not Yamamoto. I know Yamamoto got the big contract, so he's a good pick for it. But he's already on the MLB roster. He's batting in the top third of their lineup. He's going to be an everyday player, speedy, five-tool guy. Um, look out for him to break onto the scene. 
Holiday, I don't know. Junior Caminero, also a top prospect for the Tampa Bay Rays. You know, they lost Wander Franco and all those big scandals. Well, they have another top prospect, probably the number two prospect, I believe, um, filling that void right away. So I don't think he's starting in the MLB either, starting to play, but he's going to come up quick. And maybe we'll get to see that guy Skeens out in Pittsburgh at some point. I think later in the year he'll come up. He did a good job in spring training. So a lot of great stuff to look forward to in the MLB this year. I'm ready for it. And uh, we'll get going right away. Got some live streams coming up down the tap too. Just I don't know if you want to mention those here quick. Give a free plug. Yeah, definitely working on some live streams here for the MLB. Uh, not 100% sure when those will be occurring, but we're working on nailing down those details and we'll get them to you as soon as we can. It's going to be a great season here. Ready for this MLB to get going and uh, get some day games going. And everybody loves day sports. Heck yeah. Do you guys have anything you want to talk about, Otani? With Otani? Mackie, do you know that situation more than me? Um, so the only thing I really know about it is that it was $4.1 million of bets that ended up coming out of an account in his name. And the games that they were bet on, like million dollar bets on single games, Otani was getting like lit up. Like he was pitching and he just gave up like seven runs and two earned innings or two, seven earned in like two innings. And it's like, that doesn't happen a lot. And it's like specific games where it happened and he just got lit up and like they all hit. So, um, I mean, it looks very sketchy. I, the only thing when it comes down to it is that like there's no hard evidence that he is guilty. So it's going to be a decision by the MLB board or whatever. And here, here's what's going to come into play. I mean, if it wasn't Otani, the guy's guilty a thousand percent. But it's Otani, the face of the league. Is that going to come into play? Is it going to matter? I, think I don't so. know. I think so. Big. If time. it does, then they're going to have to they're going to have to give a little leeway on. I mean, you you got to be consistent with it. This is like a thing that like this keeps Pete Rose out out of the Hall of Fame. And Pete Rose wasn't even betting on his own games. He was betting on other games. So now you have a guy who is literally throwing games, diminishing the sport. And I mean, you get you're gonna just let it let it go. I mean, I I think it's pretty. You gotta set a set an example in this with how big gambling is in in the sports today. You have to you really have to draw a line with these athletes getting involved. And this is like the biggest one of them all. I mean, if you let this slide. It'll be interesting is, to follow. Is, I need him to play. More than, I need he has more than a half a billion. The MLB. The MLB he has more than a half a billion Otani dollars. A half a billion dollars on the line. That is insane. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, I need him to play. I want the Dodgers to play with him. I, I'm just excited to watch him in the Dodgers uniform. So clear him of the allegations. Free Trump, free Otani. Good stuff there, boys. That's all we got there for the MLB. But we have some uh, news here out of the college hockey world. NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Committee has selected 16 teams that will participate in the 2024 NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Championship. Regional rounds will take place in Providence, Sioux Falls, Springfield, and Maryland Heights between March 28th and March 31st. Frozen Four will be April 11th and 13th in St. Paul, Minnesota at Excel Energy Center. Going to be a great set of matchups here. Lots of good ones. Boston College, Michigan Tech, Denver, UMass, Boston College, uh, where is it? North Dakota and Michigan, Minnesota, Minnesota and Omaha, Michigan State, Western Michigan. Going to be some pretty good ones. You got anything about this, Ace? Yeah, I mean, I'm hyped to watch this. I kind of sent this in the chat the other day. I know it was peak March Madness time. Excuse me. But um, hockey's championship was Boston College versus Boston University, the best two teams in college hockey of Macklin Celebrini on Boston University, a few other great players around him. We have the best line in college hockey, maybe the best line that college hockey's ever seen. That Team USA first line, led by Cutter Godier. He's already drafted to the Flyers, and I mean, he's one of the best players in college hockey. He's leading the points. They have um, a few other big names out there, but I don't see anybody Will beating Smith. them. Yeah, Will Smith is, is the top one. They got Ryan Leonard as well. I mean, this team is stacked. When they all committed to the Boston College, I don't know if you know, they all talked to each other, their buddies, they made sure they were all going to play on the same line for Boston College. So I don't see anybody being, they handled BU too. I think it was a, a trouncing um, scoring early in that one. So I don't think BC anybody should definitely, them. they should definitely win it last year. But this, it's, this reminds me a lot. It's a lot like that Minnesota team last year that had uh, Logan Cooley and what's, what's is that other? Michigan what's with Owen Power? What? What? The Michigan team last year with Owen Powell. No, the minute no, that wasn't last year. Last year was the Minnesota team with uh 
had Logan Cooley. What are the other two kids' names in that line? The Logan Cooley line on Minnesota was like the best line in college hockey. It was ridiculous. Um, and they were the one seed going into it. Everyone thought they were going to win it. And then Quinnipiac ended up winning the, the national championship in overtime. So, I mean, the, this Boston College team has a lot of the same vibes as that team. But, um, I mean, you're going to have to see an upset for them to go down. For sure. Yeah, it's going to be some crazy hockey team. It's going to take a good goaltender performance or a high-scoring bout. What the I, hell was that it, guy's name? He was he played World Juniors this year. He lit it up. It starts with an S. It's like a long last name. He's still playing on that team, too. He's still on the same team? Let me... He's still on Minnesota. Oh, Jimmy Snuggard? Snuggerud? Yeah, Snuggerud. Jimmy Snuggerud. Yeah. Some other top World names Juniors to watch out for. They got Lane Hudson on Boston U. Seamus Casey on Michigan, Trey Augustine, Michigan State, Ryan Leonard on Boston College, like I said, Will Smith, Artem Leshnikov on Michigan State, Carter Godier, and then Macklin Celebrini is the top one to watch in this. I think the table's set for BUBC, not only in the Hockey East, but now in the Frozen Four. I really hope we get that matchup. And as a, B, a lifelong BU guy, like I've been a fan of them ever since I was younger. My brother, big Boston College guy, had to represent BU. Jack Eichel playing there, too. I mean, rocking the balls and all that. I would love to see BU go in there and get an upset in the finals if everything works out. But how often do you get the one and two matching up in the finals? Not very. Uh, you could. You could. Especially a two powerhouse team. Especially like this. this year, right? Like, there's so much better than the rest of the field. And the best part is most of them are American, too. A lot of, lot of NHL draft picks, top NHL draft picks competing this. Fun to see. NCAA hockey getting a lot better. Yeah, it's pretty cool to watch. I'm excited for this. First game tomorrow, 2 o'clock puck drop, so should be a good one. Might have some plays on this, huh? Yeah, well, you did last year. You, you were hitting well on it last year. You and I were. Yeah, uh, I did pretty well. I'm not, I'm not as invested this year because I don't know as many names, but um, I'm still, still definitely a little invested. We'll take a peek. We'll take a peek. Good stuff, boys. Lots to look forward to there as well. Uh, coming up in with March Madness this men's ice hockey championship lots look forward to plus don't forget about our march madness live streams again this saturday will be our elite eight stream followed by uh, our final four and on the sixth i believe something like that and the eighth will be the championship game plus we have some new video game streams we're going to be doing some pga 2k 23 some nhl 23 and some madden as well lots look forward to as we do those 24. each of us take madden 24 NHL well, 24. Sorry, 2K is the one that does every other year. Yeah, bet. losers. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's the best. You think? Well, so much better. Their gameplay, their gameplay updates are actually sequential, and they make sense, so they don't just stop two months after making the game. Oh, I get what you're saying. You just like the 2K so they, they do a, a year whole. and two months of updates. So now it's done. Like, there's not really any more updates now mm-hmm. since they're making the new, new game for next year. What game is this? 25. 2K. PGA. Oh, I thought you were saying PG, you say? any 2K franchise, right? No, I think the, all the other 2K games are every year. But the PGA one, they actually Keep do going. a pretty good job at. When does the new PGA yeah. come out? They do it every two years. Oh, really? Like 23, 25. Oh, so I should definitely get a new one. Wait. No, no you have 23. No, I don't like have NHL's any. on 24. I, I said 23. I messed that up. Yeah, yeah. I don't have it's PGA. Yearly. I need to get some right. more NBA 2K heads, so anybody that's our stream let me know I, I want to play against you i got mlb the show downloaded the other day great game just that in too. time for baseball season um got my diamond dynasty loaded in and some connected franchise uh, and i'm excited to get that going yeah just lots of fun stuff coming uh coming down the pipe so make sure you stay tuned make sure you check us out i think that's all we got this week boys anything else dad no let's go bees they're gonna be back in the top ranking march madness sweet 16 if you like making money tune in the huff and mackie they just cake and then um yeah, on top of that, NCAA hockey, MLB starting up. Lots of great time for sports. I saw it, one last question. I'll please pose it for the both of you. Saw it online. Um, what do you think's better? The first half of the year where you get the start of MLB and uh, NHL, you know, you get MLB World Series, or do you like this time with March Madness, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, start of MLB? Um, I'll always say March Madness time is my favorite time of year. Yeah. No real comparison, to be honest, but um, they're both good. They're all good. As long as it's not and just... Middle of July, only baseball, we're good. And then diving right into NBA and NHL playoffs. Hey, we do get to do our uh, our positional rankings for the NFL coming up in a few weeks, so I'm excited to get that going as well. Heck yeah. All right, boys, I think that's all, good. Uh, that's all we got here this week. Make sure to 
Check us out everywhere. Like, rate, subscribe, all that junk. Really helps us out. I'll see you guys here next week. That's all I got.